welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna discover the beautiful city of Casablanca. We arrived here by train from Rabat. Uh, you could also um, take a day train from Marrakesh and do a day trip. Casablanca is very accessible by train and you can just walk around and explore everything it has to offer. Hello from Casablanca, the wonderful famous city of Morocco. What I want to show you is this beautiful big mosque, which is uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in uh, Morocco. And it's uh, called Hassan II. Um, and it's the only mosque um, open for visitors, foreigners in Morocco. So. Um, yeah, we're gonna try and uh, see if we can visit it today. I've just read online. Oh my god, the wind! I just read online that the ticket to visit the mosque is around 13 euros, and um, it's uh, really windy here. It's really nice, also. It's kind of hot, warm, but it's kind of cold at the same time. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, nice place so far from what I've seen Casablanca is really nice but it's really big compared to Marrakesh and even Rabat um, yeah I'm just gonna show you the views of the ocean and we shall go inside Troubling, and Eddie draw my attention to it is that there are a bunch of kids here that just jump in the water, which uh, looks kind of dangerous to me, especially because the water, as you can see, is not really calm because it's an ocean. Yeah, so don't do that, kids. There was a guard who was in charge of, uh, of keeping them out of the water, but he just gave up because he had to chase like 30 kids around. So after we finally bought our ticket, we have to we had to wait for a couple of minutes, um, like 20, to finally uh, form a group. Um, and we have a guide. Apparently, you can only visit the mosque with the guide here in Casablanca. Um, there we have a English guide, and there was another one for French, and probably they also have one for Arabic and maybe other languages, I don't know. There were a bunch of guys there and we all were just waiting <laughs> um, for the right hour to, for the tour to begin. So this is the group and this is the mosque. And this the is Eddie. Is really interesting. <laughs> impressive. impressive. You like the square, right? I like the square. It's very sunny. I think we um, earlier today we got the sunstroke. I think that's what it's called and we are a bit dizzy <laughs> yeah the Casablanca mosque also known as the Hassan II mosque is a breathtaking masterpiece of Islamic architecture it is the largest mosque in Morocco and the seventh largest mosque in the world capable of accommodating up to 105,000 worshippers at once. The mosque was completed in 1993 after seven years of constructions and its striking design is a blend of traditional Moroccan and modern Islamic styles. As you first approach the mosque, you'll see that the, its most notable feature is its towering minaret, which stands at an impressive height of 210 meters that is 689 feet making it the largest religious structure in the world the minaret is also equipped with a powerful laser beam that points towards mecca which can be seen from up to 19 miles away during the construction process thousands of workers were involved the mosque's location on the coast presented significant challenges as the builders had to contend with the atlantic ocean's tide and strong winds the construction process also involved a significant amount of land reclamation work as the mosque 
was built partially on land and partially on the ocean. The interior of the Casablanca Mosque is just as stunning as its exterior. The prayer hall, which is the heart of the mosque, is decorated with intricate geometric patterns and vibrant colors. The walls are adorned with beautiful calligraphy from the Quran which is considered to be one of the highest form of Islamic art. The ceiling of the prayer hall is also a masterpiece with carved wooden panels that form a giant canopy above the worshippers. The panels are decorated with beautiful geometric patterns and intricate flower designs that reflect the Islamic tradition of emphasizing nature and natural beauty in their art. The chandelier, which is one of the largest in the world, is made up of thousands of individual pieces of Murano glass, which was crafted in Venice, Italy. Another very interesting thing about the roof is that this is no ordinary roof. This is a retractable roof that allows natural light to filter into the prayer hall. The roof, which is made up of hundreds of small sections, can be opened and closed to adjust the amount of light that enters the mosque. When the roof is fully retracted, the prayer hall is bathed in a beautiful natural light. The roof is also equipped with a unique drainage system that prevents water from entering the mosque during rainstorms. The system consists of a network of channels that direct rainwater to a collection tank, which can then be used for irrigation for the mosque's garden. The Hassan II Mosque is now widely regarded as a symbol of Morocco national pride. The construction of the mosque was a massive undertaking that was financed by a combination of government funds and a national donation campaign. It is estimated to have cost around 585 million US dollars to build, making it one of the most expensive religious buildings ever constructed. As I said before, the construction of the mosque required a significant amount of land reclamation work, which involved enlarging the existing coastline to create a platform from the mosque foundation. The reclamation process involved dredging sand from the ocean floor and pumping it onto the coast, which allowed the builders to create a large area of solid land on which to construct a mosque. During our guided tour in this mosque, uh, the tour guide was really kind and explained everything in the mosque, the prayer, areas where the men and the women sit and the women sit on the sides on the first floor and then also underneath the mosque there is an area specifically designed uh, to wash your hands and feet before the prayer. Casablanca Medina, also known as the Old Medina, is a bustling and vibrant neighborhood in the heart of the city. It is a labyrinth of narrow streets and alleyways that wind their way through a maze of traditional Moroccan buildings and bustling marketplaces. Here we found a fascinating blend of old and new with ancient buildings within walking distance of the modern cafes. One of the most notable features of the Casablanca Medina is its architecture. The buildings are a mix of traditional Moroccan and Andalusian styles with intricately carved wooden doors, ornate tile works, and beautiful plaster and stucco decorations. The narrow streets are lined with colorful shops and vendors selling everything from textiles and spices to souvenirs and handmade crafts. We walked right through this vibrant and bustling hub of commerce where we saw a variety of foods and traditional goods. There were vendors everywhere and everybody was friendly to us and some of them even smiled back. Given that this was during the Ramadan, the marketplace was by far the most crowded place in the entire city where it seemed like it was just any other month of the year. This historic walled city within the modern city of Casablanca is also known as a soak. The soak is filled with colorful stalls and vendors selling a diverse range of fresh fruit and vegetables, including oranges, lemons, figs, pomegranates, dates, avocados, olives, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and much more. The fruits and vegetables are often arranged in large colorful piles 
creating a stunning visual display that is sure to catch your eye. The Soak also offers a variety of other food products including spices, herbs, nuts and sweets. Outside the Ramadan month you could see street vendors selling traditional Moroccan dishes. However, we couldn't find anything else besides fresh produce and some snacks to take away. So just uh, two streets from the old Medina, you have this lovely big square, which is the Square of the United Nations. Usually there are many restaurants and cafe around, but right now, being the Ramadan month, everything is closed. So we are in the search of a restaurant because I'm very I'm hungry. hungry. Hello from um, <clears throat> dinner time. <clears throat> we are in a park, really nice park in uh, Casablanca. It's a small park where uh, children come and play. Um, we also found this uh, nice bench here, one of the few available. <laughs> <laughs> to eat um, some uh, snacks uh, that we managed to get from the supermarket we were really hungry and I told you it says Ramadan uh, here in Morocco and um, I really appreciate their dedication to their religion and I respect it deeply but I uh, I feel like I cannot go without eating the entire day I tried it uh, because we tried to find a restaurant and everything and everything is closed except for supermarkets and uh, markets and stuff like that where you can buy vegetables bread and stuff basic stuff and necessities to go at home and eat and um, because we did not know where to go to eat our uh, pain chocolat and bread we came here before we totally collapsed yeah Eddie says that some people around uh, are uh, not happy <laughs> that we came here to eat but um, I think we're good, we're good. We tried, we really tried to not offend anyone. So. Yeah, yeah we, we walked out of the streets but I was gonna faint so... <laughs> yeah, I felt like uh, my head was about to explode. But um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it took me back, like smoking weed, reading pornography in the park, kind of feels like that. Okay. Doing something illegal. Yeah, it, it, it really felt like we are doing something illegal to eat here. Although I don't think we were. No, but you don't want to, I mean, obviously people are trying to, to do this until the end of the day, you don't want to. Yeah. Probably it's hard for them. I mean, for sure. A lot of sure. people are a bit, um, dip, you know, angry a little bit. Just yeah, a little bit the, yeah, they, on edge. yeah, they are ir irritated, easily irritated right now. Um, we saw a bunch of guys in the market that, um, I don't know, they were arguing about something, fighting. Like, I saw blood today and it was not pretty, so I'm sorry for them. I hope they're all right now. Yeah. So yeah, Ramadan is uh, it's about a lot of things. So I'm not saying that I'm complaining, but I'm do. I want to say that um, if you're not ready to experience it and to understand it, maybe it's better not to come in uh, Muslim country during the Ramadan month. But this is Eddie's first Ramadan experience, so I think he's very impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's quite something. Afterwards, we walked a few kilometers and discovered a very nice neighborhood close to the royal palace. Unfortunately, the palace was closed. We walked all around it. All we could see were the carts. We had a place to visit in Casablanca. <laughs> I was about to say that this is the royal palace, but something uh, bad happened and some bird pooped on me. Anyway, this is the palace. Sorry, I could not film because the guard told me not to film. Afterwards, we walked directly to the train station. 
since it was already evening and we had to go back to Marrakesh. So we made it to <clears throat> the other uh, train station. Uh, this is uh, Casa Voyageur, which is uh, one of the train stations that will take us to Marrakesh back. This is the old train station and this is the new one. It's really big and nice and uh, clean and everything and you have uh, some uh, restaurants inside yeah it's cool so we have like 20 minutes left before our train arrives to take us back to marrakesh it's like 7 30. um people are already uh, having dinner iftar uh, during the ramadan and we are on a search for uh, uh juice for eddie I don't know if we will be able to find it because everything seems to be closed around here but let's go we have 20 minutes so not a lot of places were open because it was dinner time in ramadan but we were able to find some oranges for eddie at the local starbucks in the train station and then we reached marrakesh thank you for watching and see you next time in another video about morocco